listeners, welcome to Bar Karate, the sailing podcast. My name's Jordan Spencer and it's that time of the week where we get to hang out with some really cool sailors. But of course, I have to share the mic with my two idiot mates. So first off, Mr. Brett Perry. Greetings, exalted one. BP. Hello all, how is everyone going this fine day? Lovely day here in Sydney, my dad. Yeah, of course. Uh, mm. Excellent, mate. It's good to have mm. you. I'm mm. looking forward no, to this discussion. Feeling rather jolly, to be honest. Oh, good, good. Let's bring in the other bloke. He had a voice that could make a wolverine purr. Mr. Nick Bice. Morning, boys. Morning. Pretty excited about this week, but I have come across a discovery yes. also this week. <laughs> have you heard of this thing called Chat GBT? Negative. 100%. Basically, 100%. AI writes this stuff for you. Anyway, if you read anything from me from now on, it's fair chance a robot's done it for me. <laughs> so, and I'm going to do this live um, just to check what it does and bp you'll like this x2 blogs will be written by this thing so i'm going to write in here intro for bar karate sailing podcast by nick bice da, da, da. <laughs> right it's running rolling here it is it's just it's written it right now right uh welcome to bar karate the sailing podcast that takes a light-hearted and humorous look at the world of sailing join your host jordan spencer brett perry <laughs> and yours truly as we share our passion for the sport and bring you the latest news, Jesus interviews Christ. with top sailors and insights from our own experience on the water. Whether you're a seasoned sailor or just dipping your toes into the world of sailing, Bar Karate is the podcast for you. So grab a cold drink, sit back and enjoy the ride with Bar Karate. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's a bit scary. No, but... it's not. It's just like, just less of my job. Thousand, <laughs> just... thousand fold. Life gets easier from here on in, you reckon? Yeah, oh. is it? Anyway, oh. that, uh, this chat won't be written by, well, done by a robot. No, no. I hope not. Some say he is a robot, though. Oh. The way he performs. Yeah, yeah. So, but moving on. Shall we bring him in? Let's bring yeah, him yeah. in. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, today's guest, we're episode uh, 201. We said uh, we're going to start a new, uh, you know, we like to have a big guest on the special ones. Uh, we did the review on 200. So we saved this guest for 201 and we've been looking forward to this chat for a long time. We have got in a local electrician um, <laughs> who, who also has won the America's Cup multiple times, has gold medals and silver medals from the Olympics, eight world champions, has gone and came second in the Volvo Ocean Race and has been the World Sailor of the Year. Um. That is probably one of the most awesome uh, resumes ever we've read out. But uh, yeah, it is an absolute pleasure to chat to a longtime friend, Blair Chook. How are you, bud? Here we go, guys. Uh, very well, thank you. Cheers for having me on. Like the um, like the sparky intro as well. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to not forget your your roots, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hold on to it for as long as I can. Uh, oh, is, this oh, our, is this our first brother, brother? Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. 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 After your brother was on, we didn't chat anything about yachting on a sailing podcast. We just spoke yeah, about the reality TV show. But um, <laughs> I'll let you down early now. It's probably not going to be as good a chat as you have with JT. Yeah, he's good fun, your bro. He's a lot of fun to hang out with. Um, mate, uh, just, you know, all around congratulations. What a life, hey? Like, do you remember being a little kid thinking how how cool it would be to do some of this stuff? Did you, like, do you remember fantasizing about that? And just, you ever wake up and go, well, shit, I didn't think hard enough? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's certainly been a uh, pretty epic journey. I'm actually uh, chatting to you guys now from um, from Kitty Kitty, so up at um, home in the Bay of Islands. So, obviously, got a bit on at the moment between... Um, well, we're racing Sail GP um, next weekend, so uh, nice to come grab a couple of days up here, recharge, um, and yeah, literally started sailing right out front here. So uh, it's been an epic journey since then, and um, you know, never know where it's going to go yet. Still, still very much on it. What What was that um, when you first kicked off? Was that kind of the teams racing stuff, or because that's big up there, right? Or was it uh, even prior to that? Oh, we had a. Um, a family boat that sort of like did a lot of cruising and that sort of thing, which was pretty awesome. And then I actually did a couple of um, uh, passages up to Fiji, like when I was like 11 or 12 or something like that. And then, yeah, pretty much at that time I started teams racing. So that was the big sailing up here out of the uh, Kitty Kitty High School. I'm literally just watching um, some of them going out now on Saturday 
um, Saturday <laughs> mornings. That's that's quite cool. But um, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a fun way to get into the sport. And then I think I was about 13 or 14 before I started getting into sailing sort of dinghies by, my, by myself. Yeah, I'm, have they, I'm have they developed piece. like a, a bronze shrine of you? Like a life-size statue at the local yacht club? A kitty kitty. <laughs> kitty kitty. No, there's no... There's no statue. Um, of, uh, I like all the old pictures with the oversized tracksuits. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that good. So says, there might be a photo above the bar next to Jordan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it, it's. Uh, I, I'm interested. Like, I'm going to ask BP's question. Like, when did you think you, you know, start thinking seriously about something? Like, when did you think? Oh, hang on, I've got my head around this. Uh well, I. I like a lot of kids in NZ, I played a lot of rugby um, growing up. So that was really my main sport till I was like 14 or 15. And then I got the opportunity to um, go overseas and up to Europe winter time, obviously. So it was a bit of a clash with the rugby season. So that's where I had a decision to make and decided to take on the, the European trip. Obviously, a pretty awesome opportunity as, as a kid. Um, yeah. And then from there, just, yeah, just really loved sailing still. Um, played a bit of footy but mainly started saving more and more and then st still at that stage never really knew where it was going to go and then um, late teens or yeah late teens when I teamed up with Pete towards the Olympics you know that was really when I threw I guess the electrical apprenticeship went on hold a little bit at that stage and threw everything into that campaign and then um, just really progressed from there so even at that stage you don't know where it's going to go right you just throw everything you got it that campaign and then um obviously it worked out pretty well for us in the end and then um that was an awesome platform to go forward from it's a it's a pretty uh that was my, my one of my questions when when you met pete because obviously this uh partnership has been one of the probably one of the longest standing and most successful on the planet in sailing history and it's still going um how how, how did you meet him first and uh you know when did you know <laughs> well obviously you just said you didn't know it was going to keep going this long but it just must be. It just must be uh, so easy to, to go sailing. Yeah, well, um, Pete grew up in uh, Tauranga, so pretty much the same distance away from Auckland um, as I am north. So we raced against each other a little bit, um, maybe early, yeah, early on, and then we actually went to the Youth Olympic Festival in Sydney. Uh, I can't remember what year it was. Um, together, it's representing NZ, and then that was sort of the first time being a team together, and then I. He went to the Olympics in the 470, pretty young, obviously. Mm. Um, and then when he came back from that, he was um, keen to sail the 49er. I'd sailed the 29er a bunch by then and just done a little bit of tornado sailing with Bruce um, Kendall. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty epic experience yeah, for a young, young fella to get, yeah, sail with Bruce and, you know, obviously learn a lot of sailing, but also a lot of life, life skills. Um, and, yeah, we thought we'd just give it a, give it a um go and see how it went for a bit and um that was yeah late 2008 so um yeah no, it's been awesome since then we actually just had um pete's wedding on the weekend so it's pretty um pretty epic time and um yeah nice to look back you know yeah, obviously as you go into the safe to say journey, to, safe to say the rest is history <laughs> yeah I've been well, i'm, I'm been wondering good. <laughs> how many years of your apprenticeship you've got left <laughs> oh, no, no. is that is that the apprenticeship I've with pete that. or the apprenticeship your electrician, <laughs> electrician apprenticeship <laughs> yeah i don't think i'll ever don't you don't think you'll ever be qualified to try and look after pete <laughs> 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 it's, it's lucy's problem now yeah. um, but no, electrical apprenticeship all done done and dusted, but I lost my tool belt um, oh, pretty much straight Jesus. the first day I got qualified. So don't do how much did, of that anymore. How, how did that go when you lost your tool belt? It must have been must have been a bad day. Oh, that no, was all it was all good for me. I just got so sick of people asking me to do stuff around, around the house. Uh, <laughs> no, he, lost, um, lost it. I don't have any electrical tape on me. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Screwdrivers, no, I got none of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because for you, obviously, once you, you and Pete came together, you went into the 49ers, and at that stage, it was it was Nathan Goobs were probably the standout boat. Was that relationship ongoing early for you guys, or did you guys sort of force that? You know, like, obviously, to, to my eye, like, you, you picked up a lot, and then the two of you teams working together was really – it was – it was one of the major steps to to everything for both of you guys. That's my gut feel. 
Yeah, that was um, a pretty awesome partnership early on. Um, you know, that was obviously when Nathan Goobs just started sailing together. They're at a lot higher level than we were. They were, you know, Nathan been to the games, world champs, um, and we were just starting out. So I think it was obviously early on. We took a lot more from it, like as far as learning curve. Um, but they also knew that their goal was firmly to try and win the gold medal as well, and um, it was very much in their plan to try and have this partnership with us and. Yep. Uh, the Phillips boys were a big part part of that too. That we probably actually did more sailing with um, Will and Sam through that yeah. campaign than we did Nate and Goobs, just um, that because they had some other stuff going on. Um, so yeah, that squad we had going between NZ and Aussie was awesome. Um, you know, a lot of um, I guess thanks to Nate and Goobs, Emmett um, for all that you know they they helped us out with it that um, through that and but. You know, the reality was it wasn't all just helping us out. It was good for them. And obviously that showed in the end when they, um, you know, achieved what they set out to do. And we weren't, you know, I guess for us at that stage, the silver medal was pretty, pretty awesome too. Yeah. And that, what, was the, what was the biggest, sorry, George. I was just going to say that that relationship continued even to the latest Olympics in, with the Australian sailing team, because, you know, you were, you were two houses down from my place for in the build up. So, you know, like it, um, it's good that relationship Australia and New Zealand is quite strong despite all the jokes. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, it's, um, it's tough when you're down here to get the numbers up and, and the, you know, the fleet sizes. So you have to kind of band together and you're, you're seeing it a little bit now um, where a lot of the Europeans are sailing um, down Lanzarote, Villamore, and actually getting really good sailing in over the summer, um, which probably never used to happen so much in the Olympics um, environment. So I think it's even more important to, um, you know, obviously it's a great place to sail down here. So it's a bit of a shame when you see, you know, people from New Zealand or Australia traveling up to Europe uh, in summertime, I find. So yeah. I definitely think that working together and, you know, the future of the countries will be important. Looking back to the time with Nate, uh, Nathan and uh, Goobs, um, and you guys were obviously just about that level just underneath them. What was the biggest thing you took out from the training sessions in, in it? Because it's a, uh, you know, it's a high performance boat and they're pretty, uh, the one percenters are the key. You said your learning curve was far, quite quick, but then there's the one percenters. Yeah, we were definitely into the, the steep part of the learning curve through that stage. Um, really until uh, probably Perth 2011, I think, you know, we were, we went from 17th in the world to second at that Perth world champs. Um, and then second again, just before the Olympics. So, um, you know, the sales and the mass had changed um, for that campaign. So, um, you know, they'd got onto it quite early, had some good, good settings. So it was really, that was probably the biggest thing through there that we, we learned from there was you know, how all the different controls on the boat work, how you, the mass and sail combinations and, and all of that. And we were pretty open um, with that and um, right up until, until London. So, um, you know, obviously probably both teams, um, had a little bit back at stages, but in, in most of the terms, it was open because that's the best way you can learn if you're um, transparent with when people make, you know, changing things. So, yeah, we did a lot of speed work that campaign, yeah. um, which really helped with our overall understanding, not just for the 49er, I think, but for, um, you know, for future sailing as well, other boats. So we're saying boat speed. It was a, it was a yeah. big thing. Yeah. yeah, real focus on boat speed. We had quite a lot that we could do boat handling wise out, you know, without, thinking without them um and so that was when we were training with them was a lot of boat speed focus yeah mm. it's Good. interesting because that obviously two silvers and a gold that's pretty cool i i, I kind of wonder <laughs> and uh you, you mentioned rugby before there you know like rugby's massive in new zealand for the non-new zealanders listening it's it's if you're in the the all blacks you're as famous as you can be in new zealand I kind of think that you've, you and Pete have usurped that. Like, are you, you know, I know, I know Jess is trying to take some of your thunder there and be, you know, he's in all the mags, but are you guys <laughs> the two most famous sportsmen in Kiwi land? Cause I kind of think you are from what we've observed. No, I think like sailing's obviously a very popular sport here. Um, a lot of boating in general is obviously very popular with so much of um, NZ living close to the coast. Uh, people all got a connection to the ocean, but well, it's, sailing as a it's what's the that? law. To, it's mandatory, I think, isn't it? Law you have to own a boat in New Zealand. Yeah, pretty. Much. I think the <laughs> it's something like seven or eight 
it was 800,000 boats or something like that. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I think there's still rugby, cricket, it's still um, football, probably still um, big or at least nationally, um, rugby is still the big, most by far the most followed sport. Um, but yeah, no, it's been pretty awesome that, you know, with what we've achieved across all the different disciplines in sailing and how that's then, um, I guess, transpired and been able to inspire people and, mm. and um, connect more people to the sport of sailing. I think it's been awesome and probably and what we'll see next week in, in Littleton with Sail GP mm. with this new former sailing um, hits our shores. I think, um, you know, hopefully if we get good conditions, uh, Kiwi's going to be pretty impressed by it. I was going to say, like, almost as famous as Farlap or the Pavlova. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um mate you would have rubbed some shoulders with some pretty big celebs like you mentioned some some of the all blacks any of those uh stand out at all like oh, yeah really up there? yeah i guess nz is a pretty um small place in general so um yeah got some of the abs guys now uh, um some of my good mates um early doors actually um we randomly had um christian cullen uh, this must have been like 97, something like that, when he was like right at his prime, Christian Color and Tana Umanga, um, come and stayed here in Kitty Kitty, actually. Random oh, wow. connection through um, family friends of ours. So to have those guys stay yeah. um, during that time was pretty epic. Uh, so it I've been a hur- hurricane fan for life since then. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's 12 cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah do and we- do, you, do you manage to get them um, down to the base? They like, whether it's the cricketers or, or ABs or whoever it is, get them down to the base and involved from a nationalistic point of view um, oh. to try and give some inspiration. I'm sure Dolps um, has got a few tips for them as well. Yeah, <laughs> not formally like to, to me and my mates, but we actually had um, Razor Robinson and Jace Ryan, the Crusaders oh, yeah. coaching staff. They came, um, they came for a kind of two or three day um, yeah, session. I mean, before maybe 2020 or 2021. Um, yeah, so that was pretty that was pretty awesome to have them. They've obviously done awesome work with the, the Crusaders over the last five years. Um, obviously, Jace is involved with the All Blacks now, so that was good to, you know, share a bit of that knowledge back and forth. Um, you know, so the knowledge transfer between sports is, um, you know, although that what you're doing is different, um, a lot of how you try and be successful is um, quite similar, so I think it's really important to try and learn from each other. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be a big year for little New Zealand because you know you guys are smashing it in Sail GP. You're doing awesome. We're not that far away from the cup coming through. Um, you've got and we've got World Cup rugby coming up this year as well, haven't we? So it's your your nation's gonna be pretty excited for a while. I've got a feeling. Yeah, now we've got a big year. Um, it's gonna be oh, yeah. Personally, we're just all eyes on little to next week. Get through that. It's, um, a big moment for us. I've, raising what 18 months overseas um to finally have mm. the opportunity mm. to run a uh, race in front of home fans it's gonna be pretty pretty epic so yeah that's <clears> very much front of mind um, but yeah big year with spent you know what three or four months in barcelona later in the year yeah mate how was it though like <laughs> a few weeks back you've just seen that wing get destroyed and then all the rumors about nz not happening and all sorts of shit going on that would have nervous times for you yeah it was i mean you see obviously first off just thankful no one was hurt it was pretty fucking scary or literally yeah one of the scariest things i've yeah. seen um but then yeah you know how much hard work's gone and by so many people to have live in here um so yeah it was it was tense times but luckily you know that <clears throat> um in sail gp they got such good resource there um you know the, to just be able to turn around quite a few damaged parts obviously nothing apart from the canadian wings r- real significant but lots of little things um yeah. and obviously our boat from singapore uh, still getting fixed yeah. up so it's been a big um yeah real big push from everyone at sail gp tech and the, and the wider tech team so to know it's going to be happening next week um you know we're going to have 15 odd thousand people watching and and little yeah. it's going to be um going to be epic what can we expect while we're let's focus in on that event because um i'm thinking of flying over um what can we expect to see what's the the conditions like you know what's the local knowledge without giving your secrets away 
<laughs> well, the um, normal summertime there, you get a uh, like east and east sea breeze blows straight in. It's kind of like a little mini uh, fjord down there. So not too wide. It's like a mile and a half wide um, with big hills on both sides. So if it blows straight in there, it's pretty awesome amphitheater. Um, yeah. But as we know, with and then with the uh, site setup that they've got, grandstand there with like three or four thousand people and then some other hosting areas it's going to be a i think a setup at sale gp like we haven't seen before which can be pretty cool um but then if the wind blows <laughs> not straight up and down the, the uh harbor it could be quite interesting but it's beauty about sailing you can't control it and it's not much point trying to um trying to put too much into it because if, if you could none of us would be here right now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, we're, while we're still on Sail GP, then you guys obviously um, have been one of the form teams of the season. Um, uh, mighty impressive. Uh, let's take Sydney out of the equation because there was so much going on in Sydney. But if we look at the rest of the the year, you know, both you and Australia still stand out. Um, clearly, you guys are flying the boat slightly higher and much more stable than you were uh, originally. So there's a lot of work gone into that. Um, it almost looks like you've got the the power at the moment. You've got the psychological uh, strength at the moment, and you've got a pretty amazing team on that boat. Do you? I'm pretty certain I know the answer. Do you go into the races just expecting to win now? Like, are you that? <laughs> you, you know, you guys are just slightly better. I, I love the smile, and you're trying to work <laughs> yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Just keep the diplomatic answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think certainly Sydney was quite a shame like not with what happened on Saturday night it was um it was real bummer not for us to be able to get out and um sort of turn around Saturday's performance not that it was real bad with obviously a, a technical issue in the first race and then a, a third and a fourth so it's not our worst days racing but um yeah. you know to pick up a sixth place out of that was a bit of a bummer uh, obviously tight tightens up the season but yeah all in all we're real happy with how we're going with um you know it's been a heck of a journey to be honest to um you know, from where we came from to hmm. the learning curve we've been on. Um, it's been a huge amount of progression from the team uh, to get the results we have this year. So, yeah, we feel like we're in a, in a good spot. Um, you know, when we sail well, we um, can win a lot of races. So, uh, yeah, just as first goals to make into the final in San Fran. And then second one, obviously, is to um, be in the best shape to try and win that race. So, yeah, big. I mean, you couldn't get racing at your home event with all that um you know, the, I guess the season heating up, it's a pretty, uh, pretty awesome platform. When you, um, when the team was first developed for Sail GP, were you a bit surprised of your, not lack of performance, but just how hard it was to get to that real top end? Or was it just, you just knew you had to put time into it? Yeah, it's probably a bit of both. Like we knew that the teams were sailing at a, at a high level. We probably did underestimate how long, you know, in all the other sailing you do, you can you can perfect what you're doing or um, or improve by putting time into it. Um, we probably underestimated how restricted that time was and yeah. how um, creative would have to be to try and make gains off the water. Mm. Um, so that that has been difficult. And then obviously with the Olympics thrown in the middle of season one, um, it took ages for us to get the momentum between events to step forward each time quite often would come back and you'd be further behind than where you were the, the time before because of a crew change or time or something um so it sort of meant at the end of the, uh, uh, season two i build quite a lot back on range but that's enabled us to have a good platform to be able to build from this year um yeah we've got an awesome group of people um you know but right at the start we're in different roles you know i've never trimmed a wing on it f50 before um and he'd mm. never done flight control straight out it's always been kind of off-site flight control so there's um two of us in very new positions um and that that takes time so yeah it might have been a surprise for people outside but i think for us we knew we you know hadn't had all the time and we um you know hadn't had some of the processes in place to try and um get to the level we needed to but it's certainly pretty pleasing now that we we have got that foundation and we're still on a pretty um, steep trajectory. All right, I'm going to lay it out there. Um, <laughs> you've done a 
a shitload of sailing. I'm just looking at your Wikipedia. It's bloody impressive. Um, you, the cup uh, boats, all the 50s, the sail GP 50s. What are you well, enjoying? I, you what are you in, uh, I want to know. But no, just because there's very few people that, are, that you could answer ask this question to. <laughs> Yeah. What what yeah. are you enjoying the most at the moment so, out of both you, of them? You mean the which, uh, AC75s now? Yes. And that, what are you enjoying yeah. out of both of them? There must be different things, but, but which one do you actually really look forward to getting on? Um, well, the, the F50s are, are pretty... Uh, there's a heck of a challenge to get the co like choreography between the crew uh, to race around the track when you've got mm. nine other boats or whatever it is, nine boats on the racetrack. Um, yeah, it, take, it takes a lot. Uh, they're pretty flighty boats, so they're super, um, you know, a lot of acceleration. And I think this, if you go to where the AC 75s are now, uh, now, or even the AC 40s, they're um, really refined, um, super efficient, but aerodynamically really efficient. Um, so there's probably not the gains between the crew work and the maneuvers and, and, um, and the like, but the, um, when you get it right or wrong, but the, yeah, the speed you can go on the boat, especially the AC seventy five up and forty knots upwind, is a pretty um pretty amazing feeling. Uh, so right. yeah, you know we're going to be back on the AC seventy five soon, so that's pretty exciting. You can't relate to it. I can't, you know, look back. Yeah. As a and I didn't answer your question if you didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it's, I know it's no, a pretty, I know, just, I know you yeah. don't want to upset anyone, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a massive, it's such a cool position to be in. I'd love to be able to say, oh, you know, 75's all right, 50's okay, but I love yeah. the 49er. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. If you could throw in the 49er there, you could throw in the Volvo 65 in the Southern yeah. Ocean. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. They're all quite different and it's hard you know i wouldn't between all four of those i probably wouldn't be able to give you a, a clear cool. answer that's your answer i'll take that yeah. don't yes. worry jordan asked that at every sale gp event when he's got <laughs> the crowd at their fingertips he brings someone up and he just pops that question out yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit cheeky to the kiwis at the, the event i'm very grateful that they tolerate me is all i'll say uh, they, <laughs> they have put up with a bit yeah how's your no, what's going for future events mate I'll probably oh, my imagine last you in NZ as well. Oh, no. oh. That would be a disaster. It's gonna be a, gonna the be a big HR department to be busy. Big yeah. bullseye on your back. I, I am planning on this one being my last one. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do wonder, Blair, with the EP brought up the the cut boats, and you know, I, obviously, I've got the forty behind me on screen. I love, I just love the look of those things, and you know, love the fifties and stuff. The I'm interested the swapping between boats coming back mm. into sail GP because you're not doing a huge amount of time. Is there like, is it five minutes to get your head around? Cause you, you know, obviously your balance and your maneuvers and your timing changes for every boat. Is it five minutes to swap back into the mode or is it uh, a day or a year? <laughs> what? What? We've gone to, we've got to cut out here. No, yeah, what happened in LG? Oh, you cut out. Yep. You got Just, me? Yep, gotcha. Go. No, nah, good. Good, good. Yeah, what can happen in um, sailing GP quite often because you're only sailing for sailing the same conditions again. Um, so it does, it's not like you just raced at whatever, you know, Singapore to Sydney is completely different conditions. Mm. Um, so that's quite often what takes some time. So that, yeah, I mean, we're lucky that the boats we sail um, go similar speed and you're looking for the wind, et cetera, in, in similar spots. But um, the way oh. you sail the boats is, is quite different. So it is um, pretty unique to each one. Mm -hmm. I, I was I was watching um, some of the discussions coming off American Magic. This So I've forgotten the young bloke's name um, that's doing some steering as well. They're talking about the sweeps they're doing, and I have no idea what that means. You know, like I literally have no idea what a sweep uh, I, means. I heard that too, yeah. yeah. Can you tell me what sweeping is on the America's Cup boats? I, I think because those um, AC-40s sail on autopilot. So I think, um, I think they're talking about some trim sweeps, so they're seeing what the speed of the boat does um, as they change the the trim of the boat so um the pitch of the pitch of the boat 
Mm. So um, going more bow down or bow up. So doing a sweep through those different ranges. Uh, and then right. I think I've seen that um, that clip you're talking about. They talked about doing some um, camps, so the foil arm sweeps. Well, um, Sling, Slingsby was talking about it the other day as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's what they were they were talking about sailing the boat with you know different um, different cant angles and different mm. trims, and then obviously you can adjust the the um, the immersion of the foil as well. So um, I, I I haven't seen the particular one you're talking about and going on about, but certainly pretty impressive to see how those boats have been rolled out and then you know sailed by um, you know these other teams just straight off the bat. It's pretty uh, impressive mm, bit of yeah. kit that our you know designers and you know people at the team and then obviously McConaughey's have, have put together. Mm, mm. I thought well, they I, were I, um, actually out of respect for Dean Barker. They changed the name of the particular man, manoeuvre, the Dino, into the sweep. <laughs> oh, the sweep. <laughs> I actually have. Um, I heard someone in Sail GP calls it calls it the Dino. Way. Like <laughs> you hear it on their toms, like, like when they're going for a tack rear away. It's, I'm not sure which team it is. <laughs> Rolling into the Dino. <laughs> yeah, lads, we've got no choice. There's a Dino coming up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, beauty. No, I, I mean, I, I, I must admit, I'm, I got to do some commentary for um, a, a coast race coming up, the start of a coast race coming up, and I was just trying to think, could you make those AC, one of those AC forties, into a, a, a an offshore boat? I, I just, can you imagine one of those racing offshore? Yeah, it'd be pretty hard. The power required to control the the foil flap and and rudder would be. And then obviously on those boats, there's no um, human power at all. So it's, you need a lot of batteries. Um, but certainly the concept is pretty, pretty good with, you know, how aerodynamic they are for how much riding moment you get. Um, it's all, it's all pretty good, but yeah, we've been keen, you know, the mighty coastal classic that we got here um, from yeah. Auckland up to the, to the Bay here, we've been trying to get um, team to do it on one of the, you know the 50s or the ac40 now for, for years but we haven't uh, managed to manage to convince them but maybe get the, get, get the all clear <laughs> yeah it'd be epic i think it would just like four or five hours of records i think you'd, you'd have a pretty good shot at it <laughs> bloody <laughs> eyes your weather yeah, window hey. here's the weather window it's 25 minutes let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> mate you're going too quick for even solar energy too quick for the sun but um <laughs> You've had those forties out in the some pretty harsh condition in Huraki Gulf, just mm -hmm. sending it. Have you have you kind of been briefed to try like actually go not necessarily break the boat, but try and find its limits, of which you've had on a few occasions. Yeah, With we've certainly um, found on a few occasions. I don't know which one of us has got the the record because we've all been on the boat at different times. I think either between yeah Nathan and myself, we're probably up there. But um, no, it's. Uh, it's been fun. It's been quite an interesting, um, you know, when it's a boat that's getting rolled out to quite a few different people, it's been a different commissioning process. Like when we're back now to sort of September, October, November last year, it's a different commissioning pro process than we've done before, knowing that it's going to be rolled out to different teams and, and for the Women's uh, America's Cup, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it's, it was pretty fun to get them out on the way. So, real handful to be able to control uh, Barcelona it's a, it's gonna be uh, yeah good control um, sort of problem or, or hurdle to try and overcome mm -hmm. to make sure you're going faster on the track when you've got quite good sea state mm. it, it's interesting like um, whilst we're still on the cup stuff you've got you've got minor holes right where you've got guys sailing these boats uh, moth world champs you know Pete's got that Tommy's got that um paul's got that there's a whole bunch of moth guys you went down the um the a class um uh route you know you i think you got a second and a third at, at various world champs uh when they're falling in the a class i wonder was that a personal decision or did you guys you know it was that a team new zealand decision we get one guy out on falling cats and one guy out on falling monoholes and just try and learn different techniques is or is it just oh that butt looks cool yeah, it's probably more the latter where I think um, Pete, even it was before we started, or both for both of us, before we started sailing at Team New Zealand, um, 
but Pete had started sailing the moth, actually doing quite a bit with with NATO. Um, and then I can't remember. I did, had an opportunity to sail the A Classic. Oracle actually had a couple of boats. That one was free, so I sailed one. That was before they were foiling. And then yeah, I sort of stayed in the A class, um, A A class um, program really through Lenny and. Um, you know, I really enjoyed that boat. So I was there through the whole um, progression from from non-foiling to foiling. So when we had the seaboards um, with no elevators to then, um, you know, more J boards with with um, with elevators on the back. So it's pretty awesome to be through that from what, to about 2011, 2012, through to uh, 20, oh, when was the last time we did the world? Even 2018 or something, I think. So um, yeah, I love that boat. Pete sailed them at the, you know, for the last couple too. And I actually sailed the moth a little bit, but um, I did the moth wheels in Sorrento. But yeah, mostly we sailed, we probably put more time to each of them. But I, mm-hmm. I think if you look around, they're all, you know, the boats are going fast. They're, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, to get the most out of those boats, there's a lot of different design things you've got to try and um, eke out the speed. And so that's all teaching you things, which then translates to other sailing, um, you know, and set us up pretty nicely as, you know, the America's Cup and now Sail GP has progressed to these boats, which go pretty fast. It's, it's interesting. Um, if we go back to the last cup, we saw um, the two boats in the final were what, you know, they had the curved bottom, the boomless look, whether, you know, there was a boom under the deck or however you did did it everyone's gone down that path now that whole inside the double um you know membrane sail was something that we were trying to work out the whole time can you tell us uh what the the setup is inside there please <laughs> just oh, actually, do you actually. want do you want some yeah. photos and a drawing <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, e- it's easier if i just show you the schematic actually <laughs> you got a model <laughs> yeah no, that, that that whole development was a ton of fun. You know, the cup still gives uh, us that. Uh, yeah, the 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 uh aero design on the, the cup is such a big part of it to get those sails um through a big range of conditions. Obviously, a wing sail gives you that um far easier by being able to adjust the camber or the twist um like we can on, on sail GP. Um but that's uh, you know that problem is or it's an opportunity, right, to try and um, do it better than your position. It's it's pretty unique, and I think going forward is going to be a big big part of the cup. Yep. Yeah. Hey, um, couple of questions in this one, Blair. The post last cup, there was a bit of timing between yourself and Pete signing for Team New Zealand. Was that and plenty oh. of rumours going around? Was it always in the we bag? Spread you a few. Going, <laughs> was it always in the bag? You were gonna sign anyway and it was a bit of either a bit of a pr stunt or were you just holding out to dolts to remind him who's really the boss <laughs> um no i think that you know after the cup we went straight into the olympics right um so that was hey <laughs> Sorry, guys, that was, that was a good little deploy. I told you I'd drop some things if I don't want to ask any, <laughs> any questions. <laughs> um, no, I think after the cup was obviously straight to the Olympics. That was on the back of a big few years. So uh, to be completely honest, we just had some time out um, trying to get into sales GP, and that's kind of where things got prolonged. Um, but now very now happy to be back now and, um, you know, pushing for another... another um, you know, chance to hold up that cup. Well, mm. well which one gives us the, a good. Oh, sorry, go, John. I was just going to say one of the things we we worked out that we're in the contract was that they were renaming Cook Strait into Pete and Blair Strait, and we're just waiting <laughs> for that to come out. Do you remember that discussion? So, <laughs> yeah. has is when is that naming ceremony happening? <laughs> Pete and Blair Strait. <laughs> I don't know exactly. I'll, um, <laughs> I'm still waiting for a road sign up and Kitty Kitty. <laughs> <I reckon. Yeah. 
So, so the next one then, Blair, um, and it's all probably very complimentary, so it works for all parties, but Team New Zealand, Sail GP and Live Ocean, which is going to be good to talk about, mm. all kind of working together. How's that relationship work? I'm guessing it just adds value from all sides, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. I'm just going to move outside so my friends can put the jug on. Um, you got me all good? Yep. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, it's sweet. Um, no, it is, it's working out well. And, you know, live ocean is such a big part of everything we do now. Um, you know, really racing with purpose and want to use the platform we got to try and change the needle in the direction the ocean's, um, health is heading in. So yeah, you see it now with being, you know, the charity partner on, on the sail GP boat, um, obviously with live ocean racing, uh, and the ETF and the team up in Europe doing great work there. Um, and then, yeah, for the, the cup and sail GP in general, it, I mean, they complement each other so well. It's such a, um, you know, just the amount of sailing we're getting to do now as a group mm-hmm. in both a, a testing environment where we're pushing to try and have the fastest boat and then in, a, um, in an environment where you get tested against the best sailors in the world every other week. It's, um, you know, the, the learning and the skills we're creating as a group right now is um you know probably as steep as it's it's been for a while i think does that um and maybe jordan you could help with this one too originally when sail gp came out was there ever a restriction on cup teams entering and did that get loosened up or it was always whoever can enter can do it um clearly like you say to more time on the water is always a good thing no i think it's been um you know for sail gp there philosophy the whole time's been to have the best sailors there um so yeah and you're seeing that now like to have sailors we have you know right across all the boats you know the, it's the best of the best so um you know that's really what it's all built on sailing you know one of the fastest boats um all together in the split race style so um no it's, it's working well that they're such different formats um that you know i don't think you know, it's when you ask the question about what's better or not, they, you know, it's just all good for sailing, I think. So, mm. um, you know, I, I think hopefully over the next few years, you'll see them um, sort of working working together, um, which would be good for all of us. Yeah, cool. And uh, back to Live Ocean, what's the ambitions there? Something that's going to stick around for a long time and educational pieces throughout schools around the world and things like that? Yeah, it's very much something that's going to stick a lot uh, around for a while it's what you know we started it with a long-term view i think it'll be with us um for the rest of our careers um you know we need to do more with the platform we got and for us ocean health is um something close to our hearts and something that's pretty natural for us as sailors so um yeah it's been a pretty awesome journey for the first four or five years for us um pretty much since doing the ocean race um you know and seeing what the power of sport you know with that um that was probably a bit of a, a catalyst for us and then yeah we really it's live oceans new zealand focus but it's um also around you know we want new zealand to try and lead the world and show what a what a healthy um sort of thriving ecosystem in the ocean can can be like and right now we're not doing that we're not um we're not even really not close um so we need to you know so, sort out our own backyard first or our own ocean and then hopefully um you know lead by example to the world um and i guess just the being able to race around the world and take that message with us is is so powerful at at changing attitudes so yeah it's been awesome so far um but yeah long way long way to go and um speaking of the ocean race do you wish you kind of about Mm. 600 miles due south of adelaide south australia at the moment in the middle of the southern ocean yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. Actually, I'm keen to hear what you guys um, what you guys think of it. But I've been yeah checking in every every morning and night, um, following the track. Obviously, last time, uh, remember all my friends and family, you know, saying how much they're checking in on the little white boat um, <laughs> on the tracker. So I'm kind of uh, turned into that at the moment, just checking how they're all going. Um, but it's very very different than you know last time. That's for sure. I mean the boats in general look pretty freaking uncomfortable um, <laughs> how, how much they're slamming around but i do quite enjoy the fact that they just got their trousers on with you know just a warm sort of um 
layer on top and don't have to have the you know be outside getting smoked by the um water the whole time so there's pros and cons but um but i don't know what do, what do you guys think of the, the race oh my take on the boats is i wouldn't say they're fragile they're just so high performance yeah, tweaky, that you can't tweaky. sail to the maximum maximum speed. and what yep. we would have seen in the 65s so we were seeing 48 jibes coming into that little edge of the ice gate by all the boats sailing to full noise and literally within miles of each other whereas at the moment it seems though and that's doing i just checked this morning kevin did 500 miles in the last 24 hours cruising along probably has got bugger all sail area up just trying to keep the boat underneath them so mm. but still doing 500 miles a day whereas on the <laughs> 65 to do 500 miles you are going for it and you're tacking on or jiving rather on each little shift you're trying to get maximum out of the boat um whereas these they're trying to actually minimize um which minimize the speed and just looking after the thing mm. It seemed like you um, lost the human versus nature element a little bit, which I loved, you know, like um, seeing how hard you can push, you know, the the crew, the boats were more robust. So it's um, about how much you can push the crew um, to get the last bit of speed out um, or do more maneuvers to be in more favorable wind. So, um, yeah, it does seem like you lost that, but it, there are different challenges. And, yeah, the boats are certainly, when they get in the right conditions, are, are pretty fast, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how I'd go though with my head as nice as it would be wearing your wearing your genos and a flannel top downstairs <laughs> in the cockpit, <laughs> but just looking out the back of the boat, just getting thrown around like a rag doll. Would yeah, be the greatest fun in the world. Uh, I just got nah, a vision. If you, vision. Get, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't get seasick, it's probably a pretty good way yeah. to do it. I reckon. Yeah, that, that, that'd be the worst part of it. But I just got a vision of Kevin Escoffier with his flannel and his uh, jeans and a packet of Winnie Reds. Smoking a burner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wife um, beater on. <laughs> with the, when you you and Pete, you know, like um, I remember on the 49er a couple of times seeing Pete jump off the back a few times. Um, and, you know, like it almost the way you just grabbed the helm and took over, it almost looked like that's something you practice in training because it was a regular occurrence. Is this Pete like what what goes on with that? Yeah, it seemed to be his go-to move at the end of the um the last the last campaign. So yeah, well practiced at it. Um <laughs> I think we're always just trying to push the limits and do the best maneuver okay. you can. And um, you know, Pete uh sort of lost his footing or whatever a couple of times. But um yeah, I mean yeah, so you, I know you just do whatever you can not to capsize the boat at that stage. So <laughs> trying to get them back on board and carry on. But yeah, certainly got well practiced. The one in uh, the one in Auckland at the World Champs is pretty epic how we managed to bounce back um, from mm. that to then. Um, you know, it's probably still one of the career highlights to win a World Champs at, at home um, under those circumstances. You know, we don't normally get a heap of emotion in sailing, but I know those, that photo when we finally crossed the line in that middle race. Um, and won the world champs at home. That was freaking yeah, epic. Yeah, right. Cool. It's an interesting statement there, Blee. You normally don't get that much emotion in sailing. Is sailing still fun for you? Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah love yeah, it. Good. But just in, <laughs> compared to um, other sports where you, you know, you're in a amphitheater yeah. or a, a stadium yeah, or copy. and you can, you know, a lot of the time we're, um, you know, yeah. offshore. I think in the Volvo or the Ocean Race, actually, you get quite a lot of it. Um, when you arrive at port or leaving, like that's where there's, you know, a real high amount of emotion. I actually love that part of the race. Um, but in general, you kind of, you know, the 49er stuff or the America's Cup, you kind of, you head out and then you, you're you out doing your thing and you come back in. Um, mm, so yeah. obviously now we're a little bit closer to shore always. Um, so you, you kind of have that feeling a little bit more. But in general, in sailing, it's, it's something that's a little bit different compared to other, um, you know, high performance sports. Yeah, we're that, pretty pretty good at the staunch off in yachting. But um, yeah. <laughs> you've got a couple of characters on board in your sail GP team. Who, who's the best at the banter oh, to the other teams? Good question. Uh, uh, probably Joshy, Joshy Jr. Um, yeah. It's pretty good. And then uh, Louis Sinclair is someone you'd want in your team if it all went pear-shaped. So he's, oh. um, yeah, he's up there. 
we're big nah. fans of the we're big fans of the banter uh, here, and um, we were pretty uh, pretty tough on the first year of Sale GP on some of the banter that was going around. Um, we've sort of or minimal was, banter, minimal banter, yeah. And then the next year came out, we sort of gave it a bit of a the shark shark attacking bit. That was a bit of a laugh. But uh, what's what's the general banter like now? Is it is it is it up there? No, it's still there. Sale GP is pretty. It's actually been super fun. How because you, you have all the boats are the same, all the data's open. It means that um, yeah, there is that little more banter, and people are actually a bit more connected back to the tech site. Um, yep. You know, between compared to the America's Cup, where you kind of stay in your own teams, mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, some of the rivalries emerging within it. Are, um, you know, it definitely, I think it's good for the sport. Um, you know, obviously the one with us and the Aussies at the moment, um, you know, mm -hmm. gets talked about a lot, and we we love it. It's good, um, good to take you guys on, and you know, when you're doing it at, in the sport you love and at the, the highest level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Couldn't. Yeah. No better place to be. Pete, Pete, and Jimmy've had a bit of banter along the way. That's probably one of the better, <laughs> one of the better ones we've seen. And just the way Pete does it, actually, is a yeah. classic. Like it, it's no words. It's just a look. A look. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no, he's he's good with that. Um, a look. A look of confusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably confused the other guys too, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, um, but one of the things that uh, we've loved you for over the years, and, um, you know, the Kiwis sort of have led the way on this, um, and now it's a global uh, tradition. It's the it's the mullet. You know, you guys always run a good mullet. Um, it's gone for you now with the, the CEO role. Is that... Uh, is that difficult for you, or do you do you want like, do you want to bring it back? No, I actually had a little one going until um, the wedding, but I think Lucy would have killed me if I had had it in the wedding photo, <laughs> so I had to get rid of it for Lucy's wedding. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I I actually really like the mullet here. Too. It's practical. Um, the amount of time we spend in the sun, it's pretty good. Um, but Gee, hey, I'll let me yeah. write these times now. I've got to remind my missus about it. <laughs> yeah. It's practical. This is the greatest justification of a mullet I've ever heard. It's practical yeah. it's sun protection. Oh, if, you, if you keep it trimmed enough at the so you get rid of the side bits, you can actually, you know, as long as you stay straight on, oh, so, you're, you're so facing, you've got, they, they don't even got, notice. You've got the deep neck, the, the deep, the deep neck, sort of the drop down back mullet and then it's, side. It's just, yeah, right. just till you turn around, then they're like, oh, that guy knows how to party. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Best of both wouldn't have, wouldn't have guessed it from the front, but when he turned around, my God, it was all on. Yeah. <laughs> but I've seen like all the young 49er guys and um, now they're still running it. So it's um, it's good to see they've carried it on. And there's actually yeah, some on pretty the crook ones out there. So I'm, I'm quite proud of that. There's some very crook ones out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so for you, mate, like once all this... Let's look forward. Once all this sort of settles down, you know, later on in life, you've done everything and you're just, you're just going to, are you going to fade back into being a coach or are you going to just go cruising around the world or what's, what's the thoughts? This genuine oh, question. Oh yeah. I don't know when it'll be, but I'd love to do some cruising. That's how we, um, you know, that's how I start. First off, I said at the start, that's how I got into the, the sport. We have family yacht and um, lucky to cruise up in the islands. Um, yeah, so keen as to do that when I get some time. I want to. I don't want to just sort of jump in and out of it. I want to do it where you can do it properly. Obviously, our um, 49er coach Hamish has been a pretty good inspiration on that. He's lived a pretty um, well balanced life over the last 10, 20 years. Um, mm. So yeah, lots of lots of chats um, before 49er races about places we could go cruising. So um, yeah, at some stage do that, and then probably more time up here in, in Kitty Kitty. So. Um, yeah, but who knows when they'll be. A lot, okay. few more things well, I want to take off before then. Well, yeah, no, of course. But uh, I just, you know, because we, um, you know, there's plenty of people who cruise listening. What sort of, you're the one of the best sailors on the planet. What sort of boat do you get when you go cruising? Are you looking for something fast or are you just going to get something with lots of comfort? Yeah, good good point, actually. I, we used to have mono hulls, have like a triple skin Cody um which is a native New Zealand wood um, yacht when we grew up. Um, but more recently, I've spent a bit more time on um, not just racing catamarans, but cruising cats. Mm. And obviously, once you get to the destination, it's pretty yeah, it's pretty good with the space you get and the speed you get to sort of cruise around in. Um, but then offshore, you can get you know it can be pretty uncomfortable motion. 
Um, but so I'd probably be a bit leaning that way at the moment, to be honest. Um, so, so yeah, somewhere around you know, 40 or 50 foot cap would be probably where I'd be heading, I reckon. Shallow draft too. So you could just almost bring her up on the beach in the, where, yeah. you, where you see her now. Yeah, exactly. Up on the, up on the inlet here in Kirikiri, sweet as. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I reckon that'll be good for, you know, chuck heaps of toys on, winging gear, surfing gear, diving yeah. gear. Yeah. Speaking my language. With the um, Olympics not that far away, are you are you sort of half missing it at all? Uh, no, not not actually. Really, to be to be completely honest, I mean we're so busy. Um, you know, it's pretty. It was a tough decision at the time. Shit, yeah, when you've you know thrown everything in your life at you know something for what 10, 12 years, um, to then you know maybe longer, then you kind of to stop doing that. It was it was a um, tough decision but also you know with um you know what leading the new zealand team for sale gp and and trying to grow that all i work with live ocean and then obviously the cup there's you know you don't want to you don't want to do things in halves and you want to be able to throw yourself at everything so um yeah in, in that regard it, i think it's a pretty easy decision um and you know we achieved a lot at the olympics um you know obviously came so close to standing on the top step again in Tokyo, but still, you know, absolutely stoked with the silver medal. Um, and it's, I think it's a good time to, you know, step away and, um, and just, you know, see this, the next generation of, of sailors come through and, and represent us at the game. So yeah, still connected with, with some of those guys and girls and, um, you know, helping them, you know, from a distance with their, their campaigns. Um, but not, yeah. If I sort of think, oh shit, you know, would I, where would I be if we were doing that? I, you know, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. I must admit, though, I just I know we're running short on time, but quick comment. I was a bit disappointed with your silver, having kind of like seen what you guys had done <laughs> throughout the ocean race, uh, the Volvo and stuff, and actually, and then seeing you jump across and after the cup and all that stuff and. It was yeah, kind of a let, thought, what you're saying is kind of a letdown. No, is what you're saying. No, I, I thought, oh mate, these boys have got this in the bag for sure. Did he have some money on us, spicy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> so disappointed's the wrong word, but I could see exactly where you're going, and it's like, damn it. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean we. It was a when it got postponed, and with the cup, there it was always going to be a, a tough ask. Um, mm. In fact, we chucked everything at it, like Jordan saw us over, and um in the in queensland there um but uh yeah it was it was a big few months we pushed as hard as we could and you know we got ourselves into a um a good position to win and obviously to lose by <laughs> the smallest of margins yeah. um at the end you can sort of have a smile about it now but it's a pretty brutal way you know if you think compared to the silver medal in london where we you know had um really i guess there wasn't that heartbreak at the end to get that. It's, it's quite a different emotion, but we also mm. at the time made sure we in, enjoyed it because you look at, um, I remember seeing people when we won that first silver medal and they'd been in our position and they weren't celebrating, you know, they look and it's like, shit, you still won a medal at the Olympics. That's a hell yeah. of an achievement. So um, no, we made sure we did, but it was, yeah, it was fucking brutal at the time. <laughs> it's, um, we are, as Bossy said, we're kind of out of time here. So I, I guess I just want to bring us back to Sail GP. So for the for the punters that um, it's next weekend, as you said, there's big stands build up and it's a, it's a good venue for coming down and watching. So, you know, I guess the question is, can you predict the results now? Because I'm just looking at the reflection of the trees in your window there, mate, and it's honking by the looks of it. So yeah. um, um, are we expecting wind? You know, what do we... What are you gonna? What's going to happen? Uh, I don't know down there. I've sell, I sailed there on the A class actually, um, twenty twelve, maybe twenty thirteen, like on the C four. So when we just started foiling on them, and shit had some loose runs, like we were sort of <laughs> in that semi foiling mode where you're not really actually in control at all, uh, and like a twenty knot easterly, um, nor'easter. So hopefully we get those conditions again. If we get that, it'll be it'll be some of the best sailing I think we've seen. Um, but we have to just have to wait and see. But yeah, I mean, Christchurch has been through a hell of a lot in the last yeah, yeah. 15 years with the earthquake and everything. So um, 
I think, you know, it's going to be the first major sporting event to be back there. So, you know, we can't wait to, um, to race in, in El Turtle for the first time and, and to be doing it down there. Um, it's going to be epic. I, I have one question, last question for me. I, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, your resume, as we said, is amazing, mate. And you've sailed everything that we all dream of sailing, you know, like, um, what's been the the most extreme moment for you like where you've just gone holy shit <laughs> you know like what can you think of anything that really jumps out a uh, few different ones at times in the in the start of free was where you were definitely outside of your comfort zone um you know that well both southern ocean leagues really but especially the one um from here to around the horn up to mm. the um yeah, that was, you know, especially when we lost fish, that was freaking tough few days. It was rough, rough conditions. Um, we obviously had the mass, real issues with our mass track, so we were dealing with a lot on our own boat. Um, so that was, you were, it wasn't like immediate, it was just more a combination at that stage of like a lot, you know, it's yep. relentless pressure. Mm. Um, other, yeah, other freaky moments, you know, the pitch pole and, and Bermuda and the AC was all happened pretty oh, freaking fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a good one. So, it was, yeah, <laughs> summer sold out of that boat, um, you know, was, yeah, that was pretty freaky. But, no, I mean, it's all it's all relative, you know. Like, if you're going fast on the 49er in big conditions, you're on the edge of control as well, you know. So, it's just in some of the boats we sail now, some of the circumstances you find yourself in, the, um, the consequences are very high if you get it. Um, wrong. Mm, absolutely. Very cool. Awesome, mate. mate. It's, it's been a ton of fun. I do want to say one last thing to all the New Zealand listeners. When uh, I get to Christchurch, everything I say is in jest and fun, and I love you guys. And uh, <laughs> now, look at backwards step now. Please this don't may be our last podcast ever. <laughs> and you're like that guy, just because just you said with all due respect doesn't mean you can say whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I said this with due respect. No, mate. <laughs> you meant no, every no. word of it. <laughs> I'm actually yeah. expecting it to come my way a lot, is my gut feel. But uh, yeah, 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 no. Have, have a, yeah. Hey, have a great regatta. And uh, mate, thanks for joining us. It's been a ton of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, can't wait. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Blake. Nice Good luck next week. Cheers. Yeah, cheers on you, mate. Well done. Cheers. Yeah, see you. Bye bye. Gents, possibly. I'm going to say across across the generations, one of the more famous, famous, most famous across all generations from young kids. Remember when oh, we interviewed Hugo from young here. kids who yeah, recognize, yeah. but also from the older people and the demographic that really are into America's cups or Olympics, whatever it is. So he could possibly be one of the most famous sailors ever. Blair? Yeah, yeah. And obviously, Pete's the other partnership. They're part of that partnership, but we'll we'll bring Pete in at a later time. Um, yeah, we we like the four hundredth, maybe. Maybe, yeah. We we <laughs> Pete Pete's a great guy. Just so you know, if you, uh, it'll be a ton of fun as well. They're they're but super busy. I, you know, we the fact takes, we could get him was bloody good. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. very good. So Absolutely. we're super grateful for Blair taking the time because you know he's trying to have family time and he gave it up for us. So that is pretty decent, I reckon. Um, mm. yeah, yeah, you should must remember to thank him next week, Jordan. When he's what There's is no your role thinking. next week? What are, are, you, are you just your standard? Are you, tourist? Are you just a tourist um, or are you VIP? I'm just a I'm just doing my standard role, you know, roaming around the VIP tours, people. yeah, the VIP, VIP tours, yeah, yeah, yeah. The VIP How are they going to understand you? Is it all going to be Kiwis or it's pretty, it's pretty good? The Kiwis, <laughs> I mean, are you taking honest. a translator? <laughs> I'm just moving. I'm going to move my bows one one across, basically. But the the Kiwis are good, you know. Like they, particularly their team, you know. Like they, because yeah, there's a lot of banter going on. But no, they just they're just so good about it, you know. And and yeah. if you look at um, if you look at Slinger's wedding photos the other day, you know, some of the Kiwi team, um, the the management team of the Kiwi team are in in that photo, you know. So they're all pretty tight. Everyone's tight and friendly. One thing that was yeah. good about that interview with Blair was there was one sweet as came in. Yeah. So it was kind <laughs> of like, you know. Um, just reminding us. Yeah. Correct. Just, 
just one quick one quick one towards the end. So listen out for that one. Sweet as. <laughs> cool. All right, shall we move on? Yep. Yes. We got this it's kind of our major things going on, but there are a few little club events that I do want to uh mention. One is out of the Cows Yacht Club. Um there's an adventure race the around French Island Catamaran Challenge in 2023. So 70 kilometer, 70 kilometer catamaran challenge. Uh, for the Isle of Wight Hotel Traffic on the 25th of March. So it's not far away at 11 a.m. start. Um, 70 kilometres on a cat. I hope they get nice weather because it's still not warm there. You know, they could be bombs. finished by lunchtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, right. Get, <laughs> some bangers and, <laughs> get some bangers and mash yeah. at the uh, Isle of Wight Hotel. Oh, the pub. Bit of pub grub. Uh, uh, so it's, it does normally take about four or five hours, I reckon. But uh, yeah, uh, it's the historic French island. They do a full circumnavigation. So that'll be a bit of fun. I find that one quite interesting. Um, there's another one that I, I do think that uh, we're into as well. The uh, It looks like um, the Kiwis coming in strong here. Um, mm-hmm. It's at Pleasant Point Yacht Club. Do you guys know Pleasant Point Yacht Club? Oh, I haven't been there. I haven't been there. It's on. You... It's on as we yeah. release. Okay, um, it's in Christchurch in New Zealand. Oh, oh there you go. So I might go over and just uh, have a look to see how the event went. It's on um, Sunday as we release. So I think we fit right into this. What yeah, are they? Yeah. What? Is, what is it? A, a race to Lelyton, Littleton, <laughs> Littleton to, yeah. in preparation for the uh, Sale GP. No, it is their pirates and Viking scoundrels and scallywags. Oh, you fun definitely day. fit into this, BP. Oh, mate, <laughs> mate, whack your patch on. Not cut quite your leg sure. off. Not put quite a powder sure. on your shoulder. You're ready yeah, to go. Not quite sure which one. There's four. There's a little bit of. There's a little bit of uh, us in all of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's nine thirty sharp. So by the time we publish this, it'll have happened. So don't be late. Um, but yeah, otherwise, the, I just thought Enjoy we'd yourself. mention it. Yeah, prizes for the best dressed boat, best dressed skipper and crew. Um, also going to be Pirates versus Barbarian Rabble taking place in the Great Battle of the Mudflats. Oh, the oh. Great Battle of the Mudflats. Hey, hey. What hey. I would like to do here is I'd officially like to say if there's anyone who actually attends this uh, oh, yeah. fun Shoot day of frivolity, could you send some picks through? Because oh, yeah. I'm actually I'll quite... Yeah, let's see how we go with that and see if we've got any listeners going to the Pirates and Vikings, Scoundrels and Scallywags fun day i'm actually might go and fold myself up a newspaper pirate hat right oh, now and just would you? wear it while i'm mowing the lawns oh, in respect to the oh. activities at point pleasant oh you fantastic bastard. you just remind me i had to mow the lawns now thinking about that oh, all the oh, fun's gone I, out of my day no go on just go and put up go and fold a newspaper pirate hat up that'll make you feel better enjoy it yeah, yeah fair enough <laughs> all right um hey daddy so- there's a pirate mowing the lawn. <laughs> No, son, right. that's a scoundrel. <laughs> uh, Jack Lloyd, listener of the week, gentlemen. We've oh, got a few. Geez. We had plenty of activity come via the socials this week. Yeah. Let's be honest, we have it every week. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'd say there were this week, though, with the 200th, there was yep. just the odd, you know, tip of the hat. Congratulations. Oh, a lot of that. Um, yeah. We'd like to thank plus our listeners quite a bit of. Um, quite a some long-winded stuff as well so sorry jordan go on oh no that's all cool that's cool so the first one is we've got a couple of people bp it looks like the x2 there's a couple of x2s over in the uk right oh, next to actually each other. i'm going to write uh current status of x2 in the chat oh God, GPT. Go. yeah <laughs> look it's exciting times <laughs> obviously been a very um uh you know it's been a, a, a huge year uh, we all know for for many reasons but um the exciting part is now we have uh, two boats uh, commissioned in the UK at Hamble um, with Sea Ventures, Nigel Colley, Nick Bonner and the guys over there have uh, put the boats on the water. Um, very exciting. We had De Kafari out sailing uh, two a day- couple of days ago. Um, so that's getting getting good. But also one of the things that's happened, and for those who don't know, is that um, boat number three has been handed through to um, Gen 2 Racing, which is uh, James Ferreira setting up for the 24 Amoka. There is a um, youth development squad type of thing that um, the ex going to say, it's be... not an Amoka, is it? No, no. <laughs> it's going to be used for a platform for uh, for that uh, that whole oh, that course, whole thing. Yes. So yeah, the yeah, young yeah. 
the young up and coming offshore sailors, which is a huge thing in, in the UK and Europe alone, it's taken very seriously, but to have an X2 being put into that fray is very exciting. So that's all started. The boat's branded up and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a very exciting season, obviously. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. Well, Jeff Tuck and Edna Island were the first two people sending photos through, but uh, everyone is quite excited to see the X2 quite clearly. It's a good looking boat, BP. I, I've got to say it's a good looking boat. Um, um, so yeah, we're looking forward so when to when do seeing... we see it just kind of just handing it to all the other boats around the mm, solar. Well, I mean, you know, that this is obviously uh, part of this, the season now. There's a lot going on. Um, I've got to say Nick Bonner and the guys uh, are working really hard on uh, collecting data and learning the boats. There's obviously going to be bits and pieces we need to do to make it a, a better boat than it already is, but that's normal. Um, so we're going to be seeing some racing starting, um, you know, over the next couple of weeks. And another really mm. important note is number two, uh, which went to San Francisco has obviously had all of the retrofits done to it, which has uh, been a massive effort on all behalf on, on everyone involved, as well as the owner, Jack Burak, um, over in KKMI Port Richmond. Um, he is about to start sailing. He's got his first race on the 18th in San Francisco. So oh, we've got, it's happening. all happening. It's all happening at once. Ooh, so we're really excited for that. We should run it like a countdown clock on the website mm. Mm. <laughs> to the, to the gun. Mm. I love Point it. Barack. We're, so, like we're all Jack excited, Barack BP. In Point Rich. Yeah, good. Let's we're do all it. excited. All right. Very. So good luck, yes, mate. It is, it is exciting times and um, very exciting year ahead as we, uh, and some big news to come, um, which we will release in the coming weeks. Oh, mm. oh. Mm -hmm. I suspect I already know that news there, BP. Well, highly, highly likely. I mean, you are in the media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the media. All right. Um, Timmy Beaver. Yeah. Hey, he came in constant frustration that there are very few classes cater for normal size blokes. Love your work, Timmy. Um, <laughs> rather than introducing a new class or expecting all us fat bastards to hike hard on a fin, I've got a much more simple solution. Introduce the Clydesdale division. For all classes, <laughs> for all classes that either restrict crew weight or favor lighter sailors, there should be a division for Clydesdales. Anyone over a hundred kilograms. I don't know what that is in pounds. Does anyone? Two, 222.1. Oh, there you go. Just off Just, the top of your head. Uh, off the top of my head, yeah. <laughs> um, not only does it make it more accessible, to, it means that blokes like Jordan and I have a half chance of being allowed near a J70 or a skiff. I've even got a tagline for the Prezos. Here we go. The Clydesdale division giving fat blokes a chance and coming to a laser fleet near you. There you go. <laughs> um, blokes, giving fat blokes a chance. Yeah. I think if Jordan, Jody, and Tommy Spithill could have a red hot crack at this too. Be one hell of a J70 crew. Wow. Oh, imagine that. A couple of redheads on the same boat, though. Oh, the mist. <laughs> Bloody the hell. mist. The, pun the punch ups. Oh. <laughs> Poor Jody. I love it. Yeah, Jody would be just sitting there drinking his beer. He'd be fine. <laughs> cool. Uh, um, that was a good one. I like that one. Uh, good idea, actually. Genuinely a good idea because, um, you know, if you are heavy, um, you're not competitive. So sailing is weight conscious sport. So yeah, yeah, give it a go. You can do the reverse. You can do the 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 what what would we call it? That fleet when you're really small and lightweight. A mosquito. The, just like a human, but only smaller. But only small. <laughs> <laughs> just like a human, but only smaller. <laughs> but just, uh, only smaller class. <laughs> um we had I had a good email uh Messenger trial with uh, Pauline Brookman, who's a Queensland lass, and mm -hmm. just talking about how much she's into the show. She got put onto the show. She loves it. Blah blah blah. She did. She said she didn't have any good stories to share with, but she just wanted to reach out. You know, she didn't think she was going to be listener of the week. Good banter backwards and forwards. Um, told me a little. You know, asked her about her history and what she's been do doing, and you know, it was all it was lovely, lovely conversation. And then right at the end, she sent this little note. Oh, I forgot to mention when I was listening to the Best Bits app 200 in public with my headphones in, I accidentally laughed out loud so many times. I'm <laughs> sure people wanted to know whatever she is having. Classic. No need to reply. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, she um, she she was, said uh, she made a bit of a fool of herself, but that was. Uh, that was cool. I kind of like that. I gotta say, one. I gotta say, I, I did, I did listen to it a few times, and I, I every time I laughed, 
and yeah, that's yeah. coming did, from me. Did you crack yourself up? I cracked myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was more you, more you, Bicey, when you're rubbing your, rubbing your towel on your head because you were oh, so Jesus, much. Oh, that session with Nettie. Unfortunately, it did, you were oh. too far away from the microphone for it to hear, so it didn't go to you very much, but it was just classic. I mean, behind oh, the no, scenes. I had to, had to pat myself down after that. I got a little bit... <laughs> A little bit hot and flustered from the laughter. <laughs> uh, very funny. Yeah, all right. Well, well done, Pauline. Um, well done. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. So uh, all those listeners, you know, well done. Uh, we appreciate everything that comes through. Very yep. cool. Oh, get them off. <laughs> it's hot time with bikes. Off they go. <laughs> Yeah, the um, I can't Tracks. wait till we do it live and not just rip pants. him a trackies off. Yeah, just the Velcro. <laughs> just like the guy out of the Jack, side. the guy out of Jackass. Yeah, yeah, I'm just working on, on my under, I'm just working on me undergarments. <laughs> so, well, the sequin. That... Well, my daughter's into the calisthenics, right? So I've got access to sequins. Come on, come on. <laughs> For the listeners who can't see, he actually you remember that. Um, Kylie Minogue video clips oh, I'm spinning around and those shorts she wore in that. <laughs> Nick actually has a pair of those and he's With, wearing them. And uh, Blair was wondering where his tool belt went. I've got that <laughs> on too. And your cowboy hat. <laughs> uh, Very good. Uh, Come on. What do you got, boss? Oh, what mate, do you got? We, well, we touched on it with Blair. Um, Ocean Race. Yes. We've got to have another look at this. Um, the the boats are currently just skimming across the ice gates. Um, they've taken a bit of a right hand. So literally due south of Cape Llewellyn. Um, yep. And they just hanged a, just hung a little bit of a righty at, because there was a pretty much an exact point there on the, and the ice gate kind of came down 45 degrees. So they're just diving more and more south. Yep. Probably yep. not advised. If they're popping in for a Barbie, oh, I was going to say, if, if, uh, if they were wise, they'd actually just be hooking it a little bit left at the minute. Yeah, I was wondering. Well, I was going to ask you what when you're leaving. Well, I've got the pulled pork on, so yeah. um, it's definitely going to be slow cooked. <laughs> um, I think just looking at the weather system, maybe they're just trying to just sort of get a little zig so that when, that system can move forward slightly on, and then they've got a nice perfect reach yeah. straight into to Adelaide because. I mean, if they don't turn soon, you're going to miss. They're probably going to miss Investigator Straight. They're going to miss miss Investigator Straight. I mean, that's a that's a yeah. No, that's pretty tough at the best of times. The Investigator Straight, so they need to time it correctly. Yeah, especially 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 from the northern coast of Antarctica. Not to mention (laughs) when the brisket's going to be ready. Maybe maybe we should maybe we should give them a call and see if they're coming. No, maybe actually. Why don't don't we try that? We'll try that. We definitely will. Okay. In the meantime, though, just um, see whose numbers he got there and we'll see what we can do, Jordan. Okay. But um, what we have seen, a bit of compression. And <laughs> how do you like this? That word. Yes. The latest oh. one from the JJ's. Yeah. <laughs> compression. Compression. We've had compression. a bit of compression. We've had a bit of compression. Yeah. But um, compression on Bradley from a 500 mile lead, um, Holcium, uh, now that's down to 113 miles. Yeah, yeah, it's and I'm just poking their no- nose into lighter airs. Mm. But as mentioned, also, I'm looking at the tracker now. Yep. Um, course 121 speed, 25 knots. Yeah. Brutal. Hey, you don't see that shit every day. No. Um, yeah. I think Biotherm just jibed. So it I was just going to say. Probably. It's only saying 10. But 11th hour, 23.7. Militia, 25.8. I've got the feeling 11th, they're just biding their time, 11th hour. Mm. Yeah. They're, just, they're sailing despite the issues that they had during the week. They found a couple of cracks in their rudders yeah. um, through the blade. So who knows what that's going to lead to, but they swapped their rudders out at sea. Oh, um, big move. Well, definitely swap one. I'm not sure of the if how many spares they got on board. But, I think they repaired uh, And doing some repairs on repairs. But that slowed them down a little, but it looked as though they had some pretty benign conditions to do that. Um, and actually seeing some of the photos coming off the boats, it looks quite, well, what's pleasant. But there's <laughs> definitely more than 100 metres um, viewing, put it that yeah. way. Yeah, the, it, the swell's not huge. I, I, I'm interested there because I did expect, watching the first few legs, I thought that uh, Militia and, and 11th Hour being... 
uh, would go slightly better in the, the rougher conditions. Um, I thought that they were going to have a little bit of a speed advantage once it got a bit heavier, but it, it hasn't played out that way. Now, it could be just because of they've had to do all the repairs and so forth, but I was expecting them to show up a bit more. One thing I am happy, um, despite the fact that Holson, Holson did an amazing job and jumped on that weather system, stayed on it better than everyone I've got to admit, I am happy seeing the fleet come back together just because I mm. want to see the tension. You know, I, I don't just want one boat to just smoke yeah, away. Yeah, just fully get out. Um, exactly. And that yeah. may uh, even, I think it's going to happen even more, the, the compression. Um, like, so they are going to get closer. Is that the compression off Bradley's head? Well. <laughs> off the ice gate. <laughs> off the ice gate. Oh, off the ice gate. The imaginary ice gate. Yeah, the imaginary ice gate. It's giving... <laughs> the land effect. The land effect um, of the imaginary ice gate. <laughs> but when you zoom in on that particular corner of the yeah, ice gate, yeah. very yeah. close. I think um, Holson's boom hit it. As a matter oh. of, or their outrigger must have hit it. Are they going to do a 360? Which actually <laughs> reminds me in the um, maybe 05, 06 race. Yeah, we're on AB and AMRO. And I think it was Ericsson. And literally, we they had those imaginary ice gates. And yeah. we had to come up and we we're reaching at 90 true. And it's about 35. Not, it was heinous, heinous conditions. That's I broke my hand actually from a little slide down the deck. Yep. But we had to hold that course and not fall. And we're literally within boat lengths of it. Wow. And we had uh, Ericsson just below us by maybe two boat lengths coming to the corner. Yeah. And then whew, we just Terrible. bore away at yeah. the corner, like in the middle of the Southern Ocean. <laughs> Bloody ridiculous. What color was the mark? Um, yeah, no, it was a good one, but I'm sure Ericsson <laughs> hit him. Hit it for sure. <laughs> You got the keel wrapped around it. <laughs> I love it. Um, one thing, I something I noticed this week actually, and for all the listeners out there, just type in Abby Ayla in Facebook mm. and just see the little blog she's written. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it was Chat GPT, but um, it's quite a quite a an emotional blog, I would say. Um, but it had all sorts of discussion going on, and given that the 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 um, how much visibility there is. She could see all the birds following them and she mentioned how many albatross are following them. Um, but it's quite a well-written thing from Abby. Mm. So um, mm. go check it out, listeners. Uh, it's definitely something worth reading and uh, experiencing what all those guys and girls are going through. Tough, isn't it? It's, it is quite crazy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Very cool. Um, would you want to be out there on one of those boats? Jesus, it's a bloody big question. It is. I mean, it's hard to say no, but, and maybe it's a, hopefully it's not as relentless as what you'd think and maybe you get used to it, but I wouldn't know. I, know. I couldn't tell I you. Know. Yeah. You see the guys you. on Militia fixing their engine the other day. That wouldn't have been fun. Yeah. No. Yeah, None of it. Um, working engine. with any greases and oils and diesels and whatever else they got there and oh, chemicals and blah. Swishing yeah. around and obviously the mass repair um, that they – did we chat about that last week? Yeah, I think repair? so. We, yeah. I think, yeah, that, that mass repair, you know, I was wondering how I'd do that. Um, I must admit I sat there and I was trying to work out exactly what I'd do and um, I guess they just have a, a sleeve that they put on in the end, you know, they, and just – no, it's um. There's basically kits. This is what I picked up on it. Yeah. You can buy these kits with um. Basically, will go off in any weather. Yeah, yeah. These the the uh the carbon patch up Look. kits. Yeah, yeah. So they would have basically yeah prepared the space and just literally re-established the 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 actual laminate over the split which the Code Zero Halyard or whatever it was mm. had through. So, um, I mean, it'll be safe as, mm. well, <laughs> a lot of work. Make out, I did not say that. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> we, <laughs> there's clearly some, um, we see, uh, who was it? Will up the rig, like just covered in carbon dust and yeah, yeah. paint and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then we see Rosalind yep. up the rig, big smile on, not a, nothing on a wet weather gear she's up there for the inspection and gets the money shot yeah well, i yeah. think she was up there for four or five hours so i think no, she, she did doing... the initial inspection and we had the, all the gopros and the photos and cameras yeah. and stuff but yeah. a massive group effort and fortunately 
they were able to find a pretty light patch or super light patch to be able to do the repair. So Mate, otherwise, um, imagine being up there in 30 knots trying to do that. Oh, oh. huge. What, what about whilst we're on, Melissa, what's going on with those jumpers? Have you, you guys noticed the jumpers that are, what woolen these, jumpers or yeah, those woolen jumper, like they look like they're doing apres ski, you know, they're waiting for their, their cocktail on the, the balcony <laughs> in the, in the Alps, you know, the Alps. oh, they're pullovers, not the yeah, jumpers those... holding the rig up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was done that. I was going down that path too. So didn't we get rid of those in 2010? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we haven't seen them for a while. Yeah, yeah, something one. that they've just brought out. Yeah. <laughs> You pair of funny bastards. Well, so um, in the end, what have we got? Thousand miles or so, probably a bit more to the scoring gate, scoring uh, longitude so of which. Do you think they'll go to that scoring gate and come back for the and then come or? back? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So I've sense. got a bit of lead in time. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I was, yeah. I was just wondering because I can't imagine they'd be so rude as to not attend or RSVP. So, yeah. So well, we're looking forward it. to seeing them soon. As you said, we'll, I don't know. We got maybe we should try call some of them. I don't know. Yep. All right. I'll, I'll get on. I'll get on. Should we? On we look at the 18s um, yep. while yes. we're waiting for that because the JJs. Um, oh, they've the spelled, club heats. They're spelled Gilton on wrong on the JJ website. Just in case people are interested, oh. they've spelled it Gittinen. Um <laughs> Oh, that no, it's a different event. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Gittinen. Yeah, yeah it's, that, it's the how good's that? The, yeah, the LL Gittinen. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, did I write that? Mm. Um, so, anyway. current status is um, yeah. what Andrew leading the way. Yes. Um, Smeg second, Finport third, and probably, and as we spoke about last week, uh, well, probably the mover and shaker has to be Sean Langman on Big Pete, no sailing, mm. who after, I think it was after four or five races, were leading the yeah, fleet. Yeah, had two shockers uh, yeah. the yeah. other day. So it was, it was, it was the last two races he had shockers. So for by the time this goes to air, it'll be over, I guess. We we've got two more races to go as we're recording. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 a good event to watch. It's what they call their worlds. It, I mean, there's no one outside. Of, I think a couple of queens. Oh, we had German. We got German and Japanese. The Japanese, yeah. Um, it's sketchy. Were there um, any K ones? I didn't no, see no. any K None ones. None of them no. came over. So the Hondas, yeah. not it yet. Yeah. But anyway, um, it, it, it's good watching. You know, you can watch the stream live, so that's good fun. You know, they've they've done they throw a lot of resources at it. It's good fun, uh, and um, there is a drinking game going on. Um, in case you aren't aware, it's. <laughs> Every time the word compression is mentioned, every time, um, every time the word kumquat is mentioned, um, kumquat, okay. yeah, 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 and every time you hit the ley line, they love hitting ley lines. 18s. It's, oh yeah, the the hitting commentators the love ley lines. It's, They've overstepped, you, stood it. Yeah, you can only lose on a ley line, kids. Um, that's why we, when we teach you match racing, we tell you to take your competitor to the ley line so they can only lose from there. So anyway, um, comments from Supercoach. Yeah, <laughs> but if you Sorry. add if you add ley line compression and kumquat together, you got a massive issue. Oh, it's yeah, like yeah. a full house. You're oh. in trouble. Yeah, you're yeah, hammered. You're you're going nowhere. What the <laughs> hell is a kumquat? Kumquat's a power boat that comes through the fleet at full noise. <laughs> kumquat. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, get into it. Get into it. Have a bit of fun. Enjoy that. Um, yeah, good good sailing. Uh, but you know it's easy watching so i can yeah. tell you right now we're recording saturday morning i'm looking out the window here in sydney it's a perfect brew for a lovely northeasterly today Nor'easter. Uh, good, yeah good, good. so um cool it's it's looking potentially like a cracking day on the harbor right yeah right you yeah. work yeah cool good um I just, I just want to mention that the bacardi cup invitational regatta is mm. going on so all the star class legends are out there sailing uh in um drink and drinking bacardis i assume i don't know is that, normal is that what size it is? people normal size people yeah I, I don't know bp what is it just sponsorship it's like uh it's like rolex trying hearing me we're giving free advertising away why am i saying these brands no um, they, they well they've got they're just giving away cups yeah bacardi oh. cups bacardi cups <laughs> bacardi cups <laughs> But yeah, all the legends. Has it got, in the, 
Is it special cups with Bacardi in it, or is it got still branded Bacardi no, cups? Just cups, plastic cups, plastic cups with a picture of a yeah. Bacardi on it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, the thing I'm interested <laughs> in though is, you know, obviously it's an international regatta in the US. Um, uh, Paul O'Leary and Steve Milne currently leading, but I'm going for um, the third place team, Survival of the Fattest. Um, <laughs> Elvin Mellaby and Mark Stroop, uh, just because, you know, a good fun name in the star class is not often seen. And most of the times they just put in their numbers and do boring stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> just coming up with a name like survival of the fattest in the, in the middle of a star class Loving is it. great. Yep. Um, let's let's get Kalina on that. Let, let's, let's try and push that a bit harder. Yeah. Yeah. They need Come on to star guys. Up. Yeah. Step yeah. It up. We've got Catalina yeah. wine mixer down in there. Catalina wine mixer. That's a good one. <laughs> That's an old movie joke. That I'm, one. I might be wrong, okay. but I'm just having a look through the entry list. Um, I'm yep. a bit surprised I don't see Paul Kayard's name there. He, he is. He, he is. He, he's, he's there. He's in seventh. He's currently seventh overall seventh. currently as we look. Oh, my mistake. Um, but mm. yeah, obviously got a bit of time on his hands now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Boom, boom. <laughs> right, oh. Uh, um, I want to bring one to the uh, table, boys. Um. I'm interested uh, in your view. So this is on the 15th and 16th of July in Queensland is the 2023 Yacht Share Queensland Fin State Championship. So the Fin class, mm. right? Nothing too exciting yet. Fin yeah, no, class. You've got, a, got us riveted. Yeah, we, yeah go. I can't okay. believe it's not a 505 story. Okay, here we go. So uh, they've put a plug out. So there are quality charter boats available for those who are interested in doing it. Uh, and you're not going to win because all the youth are joining now. They've had a really good run of the youth joining. It's going to be great. But here you go. Here's the sell point. And this is lateral thinking at its finest. There are great quality charter boats available. Winds are typically 10 knot westerly. Land breezes fading to zero by lunchtime. Where we have our huge party long lunch. Saturday lunch and drinks for competitors and wives and kids are included in your entry fee. Three oh, races wow. each morning and then just enjoy the sun and relax in the afternoons. <laughs> well, is this for the whole regatta or the, just yeah, the Saturday? Yeah, no, no. They say so you get three races hang, first hang thing hang, in the morning. I'm a bit sort of confused there. You said wives and kids are included in the entry. So you get a wife and a kid every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's your food and drink for the, for the wife and kids, mate. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, so the yeah, actual no, format is, is morning got, racing. Yeah. And then long then lunches. Arvo free. Long lunches. Have oh. them <laughs> Imagine us mate, that. <laughs> you've stepped up just sitting just behind the rainbow as the class of the century. Oh, but, that, um, mate, that is good. What a way, to get, of, what a way to get rid of your hangover, eh? Go for a solo and then start it all over again. So oh, they've got it on the because it's long lunch. You're in bed oh, by seven o'clock. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, yeah. Finn cool. Class of Australia's Facebook page has it up. Um, I think they were the first. I think they're the ones that share it. Um, I was the first respondent to that, and I, <laughs> I write the I write the words interested, um, and that has turned into quite the discussion. So. <laughs> oh, I am like, interested. I'll be honest. I'm interested. They keep evolving the Finn, don't they? Just as clever. Class? Rebirth, they clever? rebirthing, very, very rebirthing. Clever. They are clever. I, you got, they're, they're good guys too. I will be honest. Just good blokes. And, and uh, wouldn't you love to see this trickle down? So Hamo in years to come <laughs> is eight a.m. starts. You're in, back in by eleven, ready for yeah. the long lunch, mate. Mm. The F and B food and beverage would be through the roof. Oh. Mm. Mm. But I just, I just wanted to share that with you, lads. Um, I thought you'd be interested in case you want to jump on a plane and come up. Maybe you know, we could or... go one step by, uh, further by seeing. No, 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 don't, don't introduce, oh, sorry. Come on, introduce the pursuit uh, uh, regatta. We could do a bar karate, bar karate re pursuit oh. regatta with eight AM starts. No, no, no. How about this, BP? You oh, have the go. regatta. Have the regatta. <laughs> then you have the long lunch, and then you do the pursuit run. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of called Mega's Barbecue during Lincoln Way. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, what next? I think that's it. Um, Shut it down, Rage. Get your guitar out. All right. I think there's there's a bit of America's Cup stuff going on, which I'm fired up. Uh, we're going to try and do a little bit, focus in on the, the women and the youth stuff. We'll try and do a bit of that. we got plenty on the go at the moment. So um, for all those... We, I don't know how we're going to keep up with all this, but regardless, yeah, I think... It's going to have to go pro. The, 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 the Swiss, I think, were sailing. They were, doing, they were doing 50 knots 
in 16 knots the other day. It's just, just insane, yeah. isn't wow. it? It's insane. Insane. It's, yeah. um, it's right so on. cool. Got my guitar. Let's go. Oh, okay. Uh, got, got your shot you glass start, on your finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where where are BP? Count us in, BP. Oh, okay. Four, Four and two, five, six, one. seven, eight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Kenny Callender, what are you playing? <laughs> that. Can you talk and sing at the same time? Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God.